postmaster who is not a turkey. In spite of what some of the things you may have read on the bathroom wall, it isn't true. Distinguished Toastmaster Paula Suma is our headliner for tonight. And as I mentioned, she's not talking turkey when she shares with us why three is a lucky number. You ready for it? Let's welcome Distinguished Toastmaster Paula Suma. Paula, before you begin for timing, how do you want your timing cues? I believe I have a total of 15 minutes. So let's just give me a green at 10, a yellow at 12, and a red at 15. How does that sound? Got it. Thank you. All right. Welcome everyone to find your funny toast man. That was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. I think she's talking turkey. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> the funny part is going to be how long it takes her to recognize the fact that she's no longer with us. As some of the turkeys that we had over the weekend are also no longer with us. I'm sure that's much to their disdain because they've been actually talking too much and they weren't aware of what they were saying. And so those are the ones that got yanked up and pulled into our Thanksgiving or holiday weekend meals. While we're waiting for Paula to return to our meeting, and we hope that's very soon, we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about, well, talking turkey. Who knows what talking turkey actually means? I see one hand, one hand, two hands. Okay, we've got three going, going for three. Well, Terry Wells, you were first up. What does talk in Turkey actually mean? It has a little bit of a variety of meanings depending on the context, but talking Turkey usually implies talking serious, unvarnished stuff, the truth, and, <sighs> but especially the hard topics. Um, when you're dealing with a business deal, talking Turkey means, you know, getting down to the things the basically the important stuff. Well, that is exactly what I read in the dictionary. But you know what? We're at Find You're Funny. And Find You're Funny, we're not going to talk seriously about much of anything. We are going to speak frankly, of course, because that's what we do. But we are going to find that funny edge to all of those serious topics. I see that our headliner is back with us, having taken a little journey, a little flight of the turkey, if you will. So please welcome once again, hopefully for a little bit longer, Distinguished Toastmaster Paula Suma. Thank you so much. I lost my way, and now I'm so happy that I found my funny, and I am back. I did mean to do that. I was just testing to see who was paying attention. That is something we used to do a lot when we made mistakes as a jazzercise instructor. If we made a mistake, we didn't admit we made a mistake. We'd say, just testing to see if you were paying attention. So that's what I was just doing. And that is no flibberty gibbet. So let me tell you. The number three, it is a lucky number. Three characters, three items, three names. Think about it. Three is used in speeches, quotes, ideas, stories, movies, TV shows, stand-up comedy acts, jokes, literature, advertising, songs, you name it. The number three pops up everywhere. You've heard of the three little pigs. You've heard of Goldilocks and the three bears. And you've heard of the Christmas Carol with the three different ghosts that visited Ebenezer Scrooge. 
How many TV shows have you watched? Situation comedies where there were three children. Home Improvement had three kids, three Full House had three kids, and even the Brady Bunch, they each had three kids. Double that makes six. I know I'm aging myself with some of these old TV shows and stories, but you get the point. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Three ways to describe. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. Three ways. The number three is well known throughout the world of acting, of comedy, of literature. Who watched The Big Bang Theory? Sheldon. Penny. 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 Three knocks, three times. That was what we knew about Sheldon. Three knocks, three times, all the time. And did you even realize that the name, Amy Farrah Fowler, three names. When I first started watching The Big Bang Theory, I thought her name was Amy Farrah Fowler. I thought Farrah Fowler was her last name. F-A-R-A-F-O-W-L-E-R, -E one word. Till I realized it's Amy, middle name Farrah, like Farrah Fawcett, and last name Fowler, the Rees. We hear it, we see it all the time. Those threes. If you're an NCIS fan, Director Vance was talking about something and he asked for information and he said to McGee and the third, and McGee said, how did you know there was a third? And Vance said, there's always a third. <laughs> yes, aside from using threes as part of the plot or premise in a story or a TV show or a movie, Three is used more frequently and more powerfully in the script. And as we know in Toastmasters, the power of using the rule of threes can take you far beyond not using the rule of threes. It is a powerful way to grab hold of people's attention, keeping it simply to three elements. The speaker can organize and deliver information filtered down to a short list, three items. And because three is actually the smallest number required to establish a pattern. With the first item, you're establishing that pattern. Then with the second one, you're reinforcing and maintaining that pattern. And when you reach the third item, and now this is the critical one, this is when you deliver the unexpected twist or punchline. You capitalize on the fact that this final item is likely unexpected and will catch the audience off guard. And that's why when we tell stories and when we want to find our funny, we want to use that rule of threes. Now you've heard about it before in passing, but my purpose this evening is to give you more examples and to have you share in some ideas on how we can utilize that rule of th threes and make your stories funny. Now, whether it's telling a story, listing items, setting up a pattern of events, involving audience members, you should almost always use the number three as a standard. When you write a speech, even if it's not a funny speech, think about using the rule of threes. Tell them something, tell them something again, and then emphasize it with a third thing. Now there's lots of ways to do this. In the beginning, I mentioned about Jowser size. Now I was a Jowser size instructor for almost 30 years. One of the very first things I remember when I was going through my certification, when you teach a class, and this has stayed with me all of 
these years and I use it in all my walk, all my aspects and within my life. When you say something, you say it three times. Now, as an instructor, you speak the words. I want you to bring your both arms up. So you say it, you show it. Okay, everyone. And you do it. So there's three ways for me to tell you to put your arms up. Put your arms up. Let's get those arms up there. Let me see. Right arm, left arm, both arms up. How many ways did I tell you? Probably more than three right there, but it's getting the point across and you all knew what to do. When I did certain things, okay, heel hops, right heel, left heel, do this, follow me. Whatever it is you're telling them, you say it three different ways so they can hear it, they can see it, and they can feel it. So we find things easier to follow when we break it down and remember three key things. How often do you find yourself when you're talking to someone or telling a story that you just automatically use three examples? It's very common. We do it without even thinking about it. How many times has someone spoken to you and told you how to do it three different ways or three different times? It's just common. We do it. And it's not like we're repeating ourselves incessantly. It's just that's something we've been trained to do. People like to laugh. People like to tell jokes, but not everyone is really good at it. So the rule of threes is a simple way to add that splash of humor to your storytelling or your speeches. So let's break it down. You start out with the main idea. For example, here's a sentence. To be a successful entrepreneur, you need to what? Shout out some things that you need to be, serious things that you need to be a successful entrepreneur. Ready. Organized. Good listener. Good planner. Okay, great. Remember those. Now shout out something kind of off the wall, silly, out of the ordinary. Brave. Unorthodox. Funny. Flexible. Out of the ordinary. Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I heard what I wanted to hear. So let's put two of those first two together and one of those third. In order to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to be Give me two of them again. Organized, organized planner. And you have to be a planner, you have to be organized, and you have to be Jewish. <laughs> okay. Not maybe not appropriate for everyone. No offense intended, but that's what I heard. I'm just repeating what I heard. All right. In order to be a successful entrepreneur, you need to be bold, persuasive and have a rich father. <laughs> okay, that third one was your punchline. That third one was your funny, that was your twist. All <laughs> right, let's do another one. A great vacation to me is, let's have two, two good ones and one silly one. Relaxing. Expensive. <laughs> On a and? And what was that last one? On a deserted island. All right. In order to have a great vacation, to me, it has to be relaxing, expensive, and on a deserted island. Okay, so there's your funny. That's how you do it. You find two things that kind of go in a pattern, and then one third thing that kind of puts a twist, a little bit excitement in it. I remember a joke I heard a long time ago, and I don't know if you remember the old Dick Van Dyke shows, and one of, I think it was Buddy, and this again, I'm really aging myself. He said to his boss, 
who did not have very much hair on his head to begin with. He was getting ready to leave the room and he says, can I get you anything? Coffee, donut, a toupee. <laughs> okay, so there's your funny. Three things are a lot easier to remember than five or 10 or 20. So keep it small and keep that third punchline exaggerated. Remember, the rule of three has been around for centuries. It's not something that Toastmasters created. It's been proven time and time again that it works. Next time you're watching a stand-up comedy act or a funny TV show or movie, use your Toastmasters listening skills. Look and listen for the use of the rule of threes. I can guarantee you that you will find many of them. And next time you're giving a speech, doing an evaluation, or answering a table topics question, try using the rule of threes. After a while, it's going to become so common for you, you won't even have to think about it. It will just come automatically. Three is a lucky number. And three can be your lucky number when you're giving speeches, telling stories, giving instructions, even having a, just a conversation with your neighbor or someone in your family. The rule of threes is always works. It always works, it always has, and it always will. Good luck. Well, fellow Toastmasters, I have to say I lied because I said there was no talking turkey at Find Your Funny, but Paula definitely gave it to us tonight. Some good information, some serious things we consider, but always with that spin. Who has some questions for our speaker today? Just go ahead and raise your hand. No questions. Wow. Well, that means that all of you either already know about this and what I told you was just, you know, a little added information. You're pointing to somebody. Fred. Yeah, I up. see Fred with his oh, hand Fred, up. Oh, Fred, Fred, Fred. I didn't even see your hand up. I am so sorry. I didn't help at the last minute, Paul. That was my fault. But my question is about the rule of three. I've heard that a lot as far as speeches and I'm working on one. Um, for this club, and you said keep the third one exaggerated. So I'm thinking about applying that to when I do my speech for the rule of threes. What do you think? I think that is a great idea. I think if it's a little bit of truth, a little bit of truth, and a little bit of an exaggeration, I think people will, you will notice the people in your audience smiling and or laughing out loud. Okay, thank you. Good idea, Fred. Thank you for that question. Anybody else? All right, think about- i put it about... in chat for you. i put it in chat. Okay, does rule of, <laughs> does rule of three apply to girlfriends? Absolutely not. <laughs> one is all you get, at least one at a time anyway. All right. <laughs> one is all you can handle. That's right. <laughs> That's right. We nope. thank you for that, Paula. And she's absolutely right, guys. One woman is all you can handle. Now, women, we have options, okay? Just want you to know we've got options. You know we can multitask. Thank you very much, Paula. Great lesson, something we can remember and use every single day and it's always a great way to get people's attention and listening to you keep them listening because they're never quite sure where you're going to take it well 